Well, 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 welcome to the Architects of Fate streaming extravaganza. That's right, you found the self-proclaimed original Twitch TTRPG stream that lets you shake up our world. Now pay attention because this is how it works. If you'd like to add some loops to this roller coaster ride of the show, you're gonna need fake chips. Now these magical loyalty points can be earned just by watching, following, hosting, subscribing, or just engaging with us in the chat. It's like free money, Pete. With your fate chips, you can use your powers as an architect to heal your favorite players, summon items that will make their adventure a lot easier, or a lot harder. You can even make players say or sing outrageously silly things. Think of those possibilities. But, but wait, wait, wait. There is more. You can also toss our unsuspecting heroes into random encounters that will leave them sweating, strategizing, and questioning their life choices. All it takes is a quick redeem command in the chat. You choose the item or action and the player you want to mess with, and we'll take it from there. So sit back, relax, and prepare yourselves for a mind-blowing spectacle of storytelling and mayhem. We've got adventure. We've got drama and more surprises than a clown car at a kid's birthday party. So let's go! And thank you for that, Felix. Welcome to all of you architects of fate to another exciting session of Conan, Adventures in an Age Undreamed of by Modiphius Entertainment. Let me just make certain I have got audio. Hey, we have audio for sure today. I just double checked. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, looking forward to having another session with you. Great to have all of you cast members here with us today. Happy early Thanksgiving for those of you guys that are having the holidays here. Uh, for any of you that I missed that had Diwali last week, happy Diwali from last week. Uh, and with that, I would like to get going by introducing our cast here. We've got a fantastic cast coming with you live. <laughs> uh, first off, I want to want to say hello and introduce our moderator, the man behind the scenes, and the one keeping us running, Nat, keeping us going. Can't see him on camera, though, because he's the man behind the curtains. Uh, after that, coming from left to right, at least according to my screen, I have in my cast team with you tonight, Thornicius, the Brassonian Ranger. After that, we have Zinnia. The mercenary queen, <laughs> the silver. What was what was it? The mercenary said at the at the bar the other day. This the silver plated bitch herself. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah! After that, we have our zealous, our vicious, our witch hunter, Abertax. We have our uh, we we have our our pet Snowy. It was cancer free our, now. Our our our, our hell steed, if you will, riding into battle, who is now cancer free. We have our emissary from the exotic and far off Katai, Zang. Then we have our deadly, lethal, scary, stealthy, hyper bubonic assassin. <laughs> And her backpack of chaosness. <laughs> and finally, I'll be playing the part of Krom, who cares not for your worries. Uh, your GM. My name is Chance, ladies and gentlemen. We love to have you here. Let's get started. So the party finds themselves here. They've now been trapped in uh, this deep, dark, serpent-filled cave. They're walking through the woods. Well, actually, I guess they're walking through the fields, and it's kind of rough and rugged. And then we had a cursed moment where we started rolling all of these cursed dice, critical failures. Somebody <laughs> fell into a sinkhole. It was too deep. They didn't have any rope. They tried to cut down trees. And instead of cutting down a tree, they cut open their arms and ripped up their clothes. And just the whole bit went left and right and the other way. Uh, so then the rest of the party kind of fell into and piled into this cursed cave. After exploring this cursed cave, they found... They found cave drawings painted by ancient Atlanteans. They have found serpents. They have found secret doors. And they have found an Indiana Jones room with an altar of a serpent that 
closed the doors on them and the ceiling began to roll down and to smash them before one of them finally sliced open their hand, bled a little bit onto the serpent altar, thus opening the door forward. And that, my friends, is where we begin our story today. <laughs> so, this door that just opened forward was described as an oversized door, but it was also kind of uh, larger at the top, rounded, and a little bit narrower at the bottom. Um, kind of like a like an Egyptian sarcophagus style, where it's kind of shaped out like that. Um, only instead of straight lines, it was smoothly rounded around and narrower at the bottom. That door comes Whoa. open. And on the other side of that door, my friends, the caves so far that you have been in have had no signs of being worked ground, other than the fact that they were smooth, regular, on the other side of this door, however, is definitively worked, almost etched, almost artistic, not quite artistic, but definitely made by uh, somebody with a sense or something uh, with a sense of design. The floors themselves are tiled. However, they are not square tiles. They're not hexagonal stock tiles. The floors themselves are tiled in wavy lines kind of like a kind of like the roof tiles like the semi-curved roof tiles only this instead of being up it's like they've been flipped upside down and put into wavy lines so the entire ground itself is not quite even there's just little rolls all over the ground not even an inch like maybe a half inch from top to bottom but it is not a smooth ground and it is definitively worked the walls themselves uh, definitely show signs of chiseling, show signs of design. The wall of the hallway in front of you is wider at the top than it is at the bottom, almost like it's in a, a similarity to a shape of a, a hood of a cobra, if you will. Um, if anybody can imagine the Acheronians in the serpent tunnel making a shape in the shape of a serpent, or making a, a tunnel in the shape of a serpent. Who could have ever predicted that? Um, the oddest part of this all, though, is all over these walls. And I say all over. It's not every couple of inches, but uh, definitely every so many feet in random intervals, everything else seems worked and designed, except for this. In random intervals, here and there, are roughly like forearm-sized holes in the wall, circular, almost perfectly circular, leading into darkness. Some of them are up on the ceiling, some of them are on the walls, even the floors have some roughly arm-sized circular holes cut into them every so often. In, in, any, in any given like 10 feet of hallway, there might be two or three or four in any given 10 feet of hallway. Some of them are emitting a strange wavering red light of the same color of the red light that was coming from the gems, the rubies on the eye of that serpent mm. altar in the prior room that you're now rapidly egressing from so that the ceiling doesn't come down and smash you again. The hallway leads forward um, and then quickly turns into, uh, takes a quick left turn, and you see a ramp leading downwards in a spiral. Leading downwards. As the passage gets deeper and deeper. Batcher, 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 mushroom, mushroom. Hey, that's my line for my druid. There are no druids here, only barbarians and assassins and mercenaries, and serpents. And snakes! Snakes! <laughs> so, party, here is a... Here's where you make a comment. Uh, I step into this hallway only a foot, and then I say, oh, this doesn't look good. Oh, I don't like the look of this hallway. What's in them holes? Some of them emit a wavery red light, providing 
uh, an unnatural kind of unholy moving light and shadows in here kind of plays tricks on the eyes sometimes that those uh, those wavy floor tiles seem like they're moving sometimes as you move because of the way the light is playing tricks on on the shadows and the way they're shaped thornicius i dare you to stick your hand in that dark hole no thank you <laughs> Does anyone remember to bring some cement? Hmm. So what? Yeah. So so the mint. He wants mint, apparently. <laughs> so we're going down the spiral ramp pace? Going down the spiral ramp case. As it continues down further and further. It's a gentle slope. It's not a steep slope. And it's a wide looping loop around. If this were to be a tower, this tower would easily be 75 feet across mm. as to the width of this ramp. As you loop down one loop, two loops, you begin to lose track of loops because it's kind of hard to tell how much of a circle you're making as you continue to go down deeper and further and deeper. Well, Until so eventually, <laughs> deeper, harder, better, stronger, faster. Hold on, I have a. <laughs> it's not me, by the way. <laughs> so we were at the top of it, right? We weren't on like just a landing that it went up as well. Yeah. That is correct. You were at the top. Yeah. Your only way to go was down, so. Cool. Okay. Um, and after some time, you make it to the bottom. There has been no exits to this ramp from the top to the bottom. <clears throat> but there has continued to be holes in the walls, some of them emitting that strange light, a rippling wavy floor pattern and the, and the tunnel itself wider at the top than it is at the bottom and when you do make it to the end of you have no idea which direction you're facing it leads to a long perfectly straight hallway going forward um further than the light your light can see you would say well with these strange strange lights that are coming out of some of these hallways and tunnels Shouldn't we be able to see further? And you would be correct, except the way the shadows flicker and twist in here makes it difficult to point to see anything too far in the distance. Mm -hmm. As this hallway is not perfectly smooth itself. There are uh, what look to be like arches in the hallway every so often. Sometimes there is an arch at the top. Sometimes there is uh, an arch coming in from the right of the wall. Sometimes there's an arch coming in from the left of the wall. Sometimes there's an arch coming from the top and the right of the wall. Randomly and seemingly without purpose. Arches jutting out of the wall. This passage continues forward for some distance. All right, should we? I guess we should. I mean, gone this far. Are we sure these are arches and not big phallus carvings like uh, Bernadette's <laughs> tower painting? <laughs> it very well could be. Maybe they're a veiny bastard. <laughs> are we sure they're arches and not actual serpents? They don't seem to be moving, and when you touch one, uh, it feels like it's made of the same stone as the rest of the place. Well, you're assuming I would reach out and touch one, but okay. I mean, let's be fair here. You would. <laughs> I might touch it with my hammer. <laughs> okay, I guess we're moving forward. You continue forward down the long, straight passage. You swear your eyes keep playing tricks on you as you see movement in front of you. You see movement behind you. Uh, at times, you swear some of the lights that you see coming out from those little hand, those little arm-sized holes flicker out entirely, and other times you swear that that one wasn't lit up. 
but it is lit up now. And they're dim. It's not that they're bright. There's no flashlights. Maybe the brightness of like a candle on the far end of a cardboard tube. I don't know. Um, you continue down the passage. And eventually, this passage opens up wide into an ovular room. Again, wider at the top than it is at the bottom. The walls kind of point out like this, and then they round up to a large cavernous, uh, to a large cavernous room. On either end of the, on either wall, to your left and to your right, there are statues. Statues of serpent man hybrids. Mm. An intelligence in their eyes. Rubies deep set where their eyes would be. Cobra hoods behind a nearly human face, slightly elongated with things coming out of it. Scales detailed, immaculately detailed onto what would be their skin. Arms laden with with devastatingly curved, wicked-looking weapons. Most of the statues are in very good repair. Some of them look like they've crumbled over time. Uh, most of them uh, seem to be very, very immaculate, dusty. Uh, and all of them are incredibly immaculately detailed. The artist that made these had uh, a lot of time and attention assuming an artist made them. There is an exit to this room straight ahead, however. <laughs> I vote that somebody goes first and looks for traps. I bravely volunteer our warrior princess. <laughs> <laughs> what was I so graciously volunteered for? You, you, you were volunteered chosen to walk down first. Oh, <laughs> I pulled pull both of my swords again, yeah. and I walk down. Bravely does she draw a weapon mm -hmm. and begin to walk forward in this elongated, cavernous room. Don't I have something that, like... Uh, let's see. You have sharp senses. You can re-roll a 1 die 20 when making an observation check. You've got superstition, healthy superstition, extra benefits versus, uh, uh, being scared. Some sort of magical attacks. I am scared. <laughs> I'm scared. Bring it. I got my swords. Here's <laughs> a statue. Just lots of really scary looking <laughs> snake man statues. As you watch her proceed slowly forward while the rest of you stand at the back of the room watching her crowded together, huddled up. Man, I hope she's okay up there. <laughs> the dim flickering red lights from the holes in the walls, this time you're certain some of them are flickering out and others are flickering in. The... Oh, you frozen, not in a good way. Moving with her. Oh, I just lost my, there we go. <laughs> Almost making it seem like the statues are moving with her. Like maybe they're rotating or they just look closer to her than they were. But when you look at the statues, they're exactly where they were in exactly the same position as they were. <coughs> staring menacingly forward. Boy, that's and scary. Glad I'm not her. She makes it about halfway through the passage. About, about halfway through the room, stops and looks over her. All I heard was looks over. Her. Yeah, you cut out again. Through the room, and then, and then cut out again. What is going on, you stupid internets? Uh, all right, let's see. Are we catching up now? Yeah. Okay. You make it halfway down the room before stopping 
and looking over your shoulder at at the party. <laughs> okay, looking at us. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> right now, you I'm in the cat's office for party. Party! <laughs> party! Jesse and. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> How's it going, guys? No. I guess so we're gonna. I'm gonna start moving forward. Hey, Xenia, give me an observation check, please. One die or two? Two die twenty. Two die twenty. And you may re-roll one of those if they don't give you a result that you want. Yes, please. Uh, I think both of those gave you the results that you want. A, a 1 and an 11, with your observation being a 14. Yeah, so that's three successes of observation. Well done. Awesome. Um, every now and then, as you get kind of like right in front of one of those holes on the wall, you hear uh, a scraping sound, a dragging sound. A hissing sound. Mm. Mm. It and could just my be. Armor. <laughs> it could just be water running in the distance, like you heard before. Um, but maybe pebbles in the water being dragged over other pebbles mm. with the hissing of the stream. That 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 could be it, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> Ting, 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 ting. <laughs> the stream. <laughs> God, God. God. And as you move forward, the room begins to Jesus. have an odor, if you will. <laughs> the room begins to smell of seafood, rotten seafood wafting from some of those holes in the walls ew did you just oh, go <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> they're in a cave it can't rain it can start to leap out leak out of the uh the darkened holes though it, it is about to yes the deeper you get into this room, the farther you get into this room, the more it begins to smell awful of fish and rottenness. Weak. Let's get out of here. <laughs> the enemy gate is down. The only way forward is forward. Yep, let's move. Before this gets worse. All so, right. uh, Zinnia and Thornicius are walking forward. I'll follow Thornicius. Me too, shall follow. Yeah, Lift my hammer and follow warily, poking at anything that even looks like it might be. <laughs> As you move through, you swear the statues, the shadows is are making the statues seem like they're looking at you. No matter how far you move, just the way those sh shadows are running off, those statues are always looking at you. And I don't mean you as in it looks like they're looking at one of you. I mean every single person here, when you see a statue, it looks like it's looking exactly at you, the person hmm. doing the statue. Hello. Hmm. The song, I think we're alone now. It's nope, I don't good. think so. We're alone now. <laughs> I don't think we're alone now. Mm -mm. Exactly. Y'all smell that? It smells. <laughs> Did you not shower? <laughs> Vinny, I'm with your three. Since, since the Ruby Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Zinnia, with your three observation, I'm not going to make you roll it again. 
you see from one of the holes above in the ceiling-ish area, you see the head of a serpent poke its head out, slithers its tongue a little bit, and then tucks back up into that hole. Is it trying to seduce her? <laughs> well, it tastes the air and slithers back up into the hole. You're the only one that sees it because you're the only one on the end of the room. Mm. We got company. Okay. It was a little. No, I haven't seen it yet. I'll have to take a look. Is it in the Discord, Goliak? I'll have to. I'll look at it. So um, I'm gonna draw. In general, a, okay. Pull my. I'll, I'll, look, I'll look at it in the, uh, when we get to a, a break area. Mm. Hey guys, um, the serpent kind of came out. Let us know they're here. Let us know he was here. Up in the hole. Up in the hole. Up in the hole. The hole. Don't call me a hoe. That's wrong. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Gaming Conan Fate. If the chainmail brawl fits it. Corin says, where there's one, there's more. Yeah, always. <laughs> I forgot he was even with us. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Snakes and hoes travel in packs. You're correct. <laughs> Too bad I don't know a snake charming spell. Yeah, how about that one? Do you have a snake charming spell in your book of tricks there? Zang? I am not a snake charmer. I'm just asking. <laughs> But you can dissuade it I mean, diplomacy. I guess I, I, I am good at charming politicians. <laughs> Fair enough and close enough, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty good at snake charming, he says, and pats his hammer. <laughs> Different kind of poison sack there, buddy. Cool. <laughs> All right, and well, I'm, as the rest of the party way. bravely follows far behind to the other side of the room, nothing else seems to happen by the time you get to the exit. Hmm. Okay. Run. Run, 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 run. Just a wall full of statues that definitely are not moving, mm -hmm. not turning, not sentient. And watching you. I need a discipline check from 1D5 from Thornicius and Zang. I need a discipline check. Okay. I can probably do this. I was going to say the one strongest in our group and me. <laughs> Let's see, my discipline is at. Uh, well, that's one success for you, Thornicius. Yeah. Wait, I think I might have uh, something in that. Where's my character? And then Zing, what is your discipline? 13 and 3. I have a number of abilities in discipline as well. Don't know what's the He's lying. Slash R, space. Abilities. Oh, we can have a nice thing. Well, that is one success. If you would like to re-roll the 14, you are welcome to. You tell me if you have the capability to do so. Uh, let's see. I think I do. I can. Yeah. Courageous says that you can re-roll a one die 20. Yep. Yeah, that one I have. If you want to, but... gives me a you know another 5% chance of a critical mm -hmm. failure and all. Complication, I should say. Oh. Do it anyway. Nice. Ah. All right, that would be three successes then. Okay. Uh, you feel the same nervousness that you've been feeling throughout most of this cursed cave. Thornicious. Again, 
Do you feel that tug? You know, you need to keep moving forward because you got to get out of here, and the only way out of here is forward. All right, so forward we go. The party continues to move forward down the passage. You see ahead of you, the passage seems to open up ahead of you, left and to the right. As you get closer, you see that the passage is opening up into a large, roundish, round chamber with a pillar in the middle making it so you have to go all the way around the pillar, kind of like a roundabout, except the about part is stone. Okay. Okay. The, the, the about part is stone. This room has a passage to the left of the roundabout as you're facing it, a passage to the right of the roundabout as you're facing it, and a passage on the far side of the roundabout as you're facing it. Mm. Don't you want to go away from where we just came from? Well, yeah, each way goes away from where we're going, but from where we're coming from. But does any of them lead up, or is it just straight ahead? Level, and this has worked. This to ground is perfectly level, just tiled and wavy, and there are holes in the pillar in the middle, even. Oh crap. Don't like holes. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> what is the power? Right, what is the pillar made of? I vote we go anti clockwise. Worked uh, stone. Okay, so it's, it's carvable though. We can carve into it. Sure. If we're using Thornicius's um, you know, method of carving and directions and things like that, oh, um, yeah, to be able to carve, <laughs> we were going um, in the wall, or is it a material that we can't carve into? Like we can carve into all of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's worked stone, but you can scratch into it. Okay. So Thornicius, shall we mark that we came from this passage and then that we're going to take going what counterclockwise? I think was the suggestion. Yeah. We go to the one to our right and then mark we're going down that one. Yeah. Now counterclockwise would be the one to the left, wouldn't it? No, the one to our left would no. be clockwise. It would be clockwise. Clockwise goes up and then goes right and then down and then left. So we're facing... clockwise would be up at twelve and then left to nine. From no. our position from our position we would be going to the, left to the right and around is clockwise we're going counterclockwise. I guess that makes sense too that that's logical all right so you're going right <laughs> that way we're going right <laughs> okay. the hallway again becomes even worked wider at the top wavy tiles why would it be wider at the top you continue down the passage for a period of time before coming upon a... Is it that the hallway itself is almost trapezohedral? Think of a, like a sarcophagus, like an Egyptian sarcophagus where it's narrower at the bottom and it goes up and then round All right, no, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I just, just thinking. It's creepy sounding, but I'm wondering, hopefully it's just style. Well, here's the real question. Is it sloped enough for us to climb up it? Not it's really. Good. I mean, you could like lean against it. I, I mean, I guess if you found like a hole that you can get a foot into one of the holes, maybe, and then a hand maybe into another one of the holes. But definitely stick your hands in the holes. Yeah, sticking your hands in holes you can't see are always a good idea in a, in a booby trapped temple of doom. Yeah. <laughs> you continue the down the hallway. And come upon another rounded chamber with a large pillar in the middle that appears to basically be identical to the one you just came from. It has four passages, one to the left, one to the right, and one ahead. Can we at least check for observation and see if any of these path, uh, paths are more worn uh, than others? 
Uh, you can. However, the the the, the worked tilings on the floor would make that difficult. More scuffing and chipping than others. Potential, potentially. Depending on if we roll well. <laughs> potentially. I'm afraid what you're gonna find is foot stuff marks. At least I hope those are foot scuff marks. Wait, I think it can re-roll the one. Um, observation. Yeah, I can re-roll one. Hey. So one success. One success. Um, as you're looking down, about all you can get is these things are smoothed out, uh, almost as if things have been dragged or slid across them rather than stepped or chipped by metal or boots or something. More like something has slithered across them. Oh, God, we're in a giant snake's den. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goody, we're in a feeding pit. <laughs> <clears throat> so. Do you have any snake bait that we can throw someplace else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's rude. <laughs> I'm not snake face. That's not right. They won't like me. I'm full of tin. Good. <laughs> so, when in doubt, mark the path we came from and take a right. Mm. Or go back and try another path. And then if something changes, then we come uh, back here. Okay. We should at least mark that we turned around here, just so in case we come by this intersection again. Yeah, kind of, you just like make a U. Yeah, make a U with an around? arrow back. So you're just pulling a 180? Sorry, I missed it. Why do you guys want to turn around? To check the other two. Uh, you just yeah. want to pop your head into each room and see if there's anything interesting. Yeah, right, we exactly. this one, we see another four-way intersection. Uh, Thornicius wants to go back and check and see if there are other four-way intersections in all of them. Well, you see a roundabout that has four exits, but you can't really see it as a singular intersection because there is a blocked line of sight. You can't see any of the exits uh, from any of the other exits. Um, what? We, so we went to the one on the right where we came in. Yes. Okay. And they're yeah. suggesting doing a 180. Why? Check the other path. Just wants to pop his head into each one. I'm doing a loop around the entire roundabout before we go through one. Sure. I'm gonna go one more. Is that what you mean? Right. And then yes. see. I think that's right. Okay. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Scratch out the U. <laughs> Put an arrow going to the right. Okay, so you're taking the right passage. Okay. Uh, as you move down the right passage, the flooring seems to ripple. This time, not quite as even. Like, actually, the floor itself seems to ripple up and down just a little bit before ending in a smooth, rounded chamber. Small chamber with some small number of serpents. Eight small number of serpents in that chamber that have now been disturbed and awoken. See what you did? <laughs> I want to do you turn. <laughs> Y'all didn't listen to me. All right, listen to the down. ranger. The pathfinder doesn't know where he's going. <laughs> they begin to rise up and hiss. All right. Do we see anything else in this room other than the snakes? You see nothing else in the small chamber other than the snakes. All right, snake whisperer, go get them. Let's just, <laughs> Let's just back off. Them, all right. Can I line up for one arrow shot, like 
All right, I look at Zinni and I say, are we doing this or are we backing off? Backing off. All right. They're going to chase us. Uh, are you like sprinting backing off or a tactical retreat backing off? Tactical retreat. Like slowly backing off, facing or them. So like maybe they'll go back to sleep. Uh, you as you start to slowly back away, you almost see the rippling effect from the shadows and light almost appear to have some sort of ripple over them, and they move in a strangely coordinated fashion to attack. Oh, well, we tried. Not very. Right. It's all on you. Heroes do get to go first, though. So you're the snake whisperer. Thought you could convince these bad politicians to go back to sleep. Yeah. I specifically said I couldn't. Who's our snake politicians? Well, he was also making the joke about being the snake whisperer and patting his hammer. So yeah, but he was the one who was going to put him to sleep. No. All right. I draw on fire. As soon as chance on freezes. Really? <laughs> there he is. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. I have to get real internet. You, you were just holding still. Oh, okay. Well, I thought he was freezing. He was waiting for us. All right. Fine. They're they're getting into a coordinated pattern. Leroy and Leroy. <laughs> Go ahead. Leroy, the assassin is like, they're coming for us. Well, I'm going for them first. Surprise attack. Yeah. Um, what's my cue here? Um, I don't know. How do I attack? You roll a couple <laughs> of dice. I cast magic missile at the darkness. But why do you want to attack the darkness? <laughs> because it's a dark room. Gosh, Crom. Melee. I have two hits. That is two successes? Okay. Well, these creatures aren't knowledgeable enough to uh, dodge a blow, so you yeah. generate one yeah, yeah. point of momentum yeah. for the party. Roll four damage, sir. <sighs> what am I using? I'm using my uh, Axe of Doom and Despair, because that's what was in my hand. Um, okay. Six. Very right, dear. One, the two, Blackened three, Battle Axe. I can re-roll two of those. Oh, Probably. Melee, melee, melee. Yes, I can be rolled. Hang on. Here, mm -hmm. All right, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points of damage, with two of them being effects, effects of vicious two, which brings your total damage up to 11. Oof. That's a lot of damage. So, Here's what happens, right? These snakes rise up and begin to swarm forward in a coordinated method, a coordinated motion, which makes it that much easier to swing your axe through two of them at the same time. They barely even give you a piece of resistance as you slice and chop straight through their little snaky bony bodies. And two of them, sushi. <laughs> two of them become sushi. <laughs> Um, I need an observation check, uh, from in, uh, let's go with Abertac. No. Observation check, please. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> Do you have one of those uh, substitutes for, or in lieu of observation? Yeah, I substitute my observation for observation. Really? Yeah. Uh, it somehow roll 20 closed on me. All right, there we go. Probably nothing. Is that one success? That is not one success. That is zero. Oh, okay. 
Well, you don't really notice anything. <laughs> <laughs> he just sliced a couple of snakes clean through. Good. Whoosh. Good. Uh, mm. Who's next? All right. Who wants to be next? I'll, I'll, I'll take next. a swing. Hammer smash! Now he wants to be the hero with the hammer. All right. So that's two. <laughs> Two. All right, you generate one point of momentum for the party. I'm sorry, that's three. You generate two points of momentum for the party. <laughs> I figured Zenya would need some for her attack, so. Thanks. Oh, she is. Yeah. I believe you roll six dice of damage. Yep. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Can you reroll any of those? I can reroll the four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven points of damage. One, two, three, four, five of them being vicious. Two. No. Please don't. Uh, ten plus. I love you. <laughs> you that, they go well? <laughs> that brings the total damage up to 17, I nice. believe. Splat. The best hit I ever had. Which I think is the highest damage we have seen yet. Impressive. For a snake. So. Show off. So this <laughs> guy takes his hammer and he does a bit of a Thor moment. He's like, he just, he just slides straight forward into a snake, twists the hammer, wraps the snake up around the hammer, does a big sweep around, catches a second snake in the hammer as he's swinging it up over his head without losing either of the snakes or throwing the snakes at anybody. The two Thank snakes you. wrapped around the hammer stay on as he smashes it down on a third snake, turning all three into more calamari. You. <laughs> that I is... only counts as one. It only it still only counts as one. <laughs> I'm even impressed myself. Right. Uh, th that right, would be you. five of the eight serpents already turned to goo before I even get attack rolls. <laughs> Shall I? <laughs> Are you going to point blanket with an arrow? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he shoots an arrow. How many? It's 2d20. I did. Oh, okay. Uh, a 10 so and a 12. Yeah. Both are, both are hits then, and then I'll uh, do 7d6. That's a point of momentum for the party. Yep. And re-roll and, and the threes, I think it is. You can re-roll three? Oh, yeah. Ranged, 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 ranged. Yeah, so you can re-roll up to four. Yeah. Oh, All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points of damage, but only one of them being an effect. Which is piercing. Uh, the effect being piercing, which doesn't really help because these things don't have armor. Eight points of damage. He puts an arrow straight through the, uh, the cotton mouth of one of these snakes, bringing it down to two living snakes left. <laughs> Should I just look at them and they fall over? Yeah, I did. <laughs> you don't even burns. have a name. What are you doing? Just fall <laughs> over. Zinnia burns all of that up and just like... <laughs> you snakes don't even have name tags. You stand no chance. Roll me an attack roll, Zinnia. 
Okay. Might as well even put a point of momentum into it. Why not? We're at three by twenty. I worked hard to earn you a point of momentum to use for your attack. <laughs> you mean two points? <laughs> Roll three die twenty. Roll another d twenty. Yeah. Yeah, they're all good. Well, all right, point you point generate point two point. points of momentum, bringing the party up to five, which is as much as the party can handle. Please roll me damage on your first sword, and would you like to use any points of momentum just to deal straight extra damage? Sure. Yes. How much? You've got, you could spend like three, four points of momentum for three, four How more points of damage. Three. She three spends three for extra points extra of extra. momentum. Uh, roll me your damage roll, please. Your damage roll on your sword is five die six. That is one, two, three, four. Four of them being effects. Their effects in this case, however, is piercing, which doesn't help here. So you can you're getting... one of those, What's that? You have a melee skill, you can reroll one of those? Uh, yeah. Actually, she probably does have no mercy. Yep, may reroll uh, up to three of those. Yikes. Mm-hmm. You just yeah, need the one that failed, right? Just re-roll the three, I guess. Yeah. There you go. Right. One. That would be five points of damage with five effects, um, plus three points of damage of momentum, which combined with the damage that was done on the last attack, you swing, you slice, you dice. <laughs> and there are now no more. Uh, there are now uh, sixteen snake pieces instead of eight. <laughs> Didn't even break a sweat. Did these snakes have fangs? I'm guessing. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna take like a couple of the heads and throw them in a bag, just for later. He starts chopping heads and putting them in his backpack right next to your guys' provisions. Yep. Sorry, Zhang, you can get the next one. <laughs> Not next to the food. <laughs> well, here, you take the food. Please get the food clean. Just somebody give me a sack. <laughs> you want it over your head? Or wait, sorry, no, that's a force of my profession habit. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no, yeah. <laughs> and I uh, do a 180. Well, so we're in... We went into the room and determined it was a dead end, right? Yes. Well, we're not going up. Might as well turn around. You return continue. back to the pillared roundabout room. You can go left, you can go right, or you can go around the pillar to the far side and go straight ahead. Around the pillar to the far side is all that's left, right? No. no. no we, we go right. right. We okay. yeah, straight you ahead. go right. You take a right. You mark that you're turning right here. I'll even give it to you, even though you're not saying it out loud, but you said yes. you wanted to. You take a right. You move down the passage another uh, a small amount of time. You come across a largest room, rounded around the edges, pillar in the middle, yeah. four exits on each of the four angles of the roundabout room. So it's another roundabout. Another roundabout. There's a whole lot oh, of work to put into this. All right, I say we just keep following the thing. right turns. Then that's that's my vote. I agree. Okay, mm -hmm. I agree. Right turn. <laughs> you take I a also right. Want to mark the wall. Nominate the pancreas as the most valuable organ. You take a right down this uh, passage. After a short period of time, you come to a smallish rounded chamber with a nest of serpents. Here we go again. Well, we still already have like two points of momentum. So, lady, why don't you go ahead and take your <laughs> three The momentum slings. has expired. The combat was over. So then we're there gonna... are seven serpents in this chamber. They see you begin to rise up. I need somebody to give me an observation check. I'll do it. Since I'm good at it. Yeah. 
Mm. Uh, well, that was a really good role and then a really bad role. <laughs> well, um, so again, kind of like I mentioned last time, the, the way that the light in here is playing shadows and playing tricks on all of the shadows, you almost see the shadow rippling off of them and, and their eyes are reflecting the light from those holes in the wall, almost making their eyes seem like they're glowing reddish, almost making their eyes seem like they're glowing the same red that just for a moment you saw reflected in Vera's teddy bear. Oh. Throw your teddy bear, throw your teddy bear. <laughs> throw the teddy bear at the snakes. <laughs> <laughs> And you swear the teddy bear is rippling, too. Oh, God. All right, your teddy bear. Look at it. <laughs> it just looks like your teddy bear. So look at right. I thought I saw it ripple. Um, guys, something's not natural here. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, no, there's something really bad going on here. <laughs> I don't know what exactly, but like I'm seeing rippling here and there, lights. Your teddy bear like winked at me. Uh, so the snakes are attacking if you wish to uh, go first. They have raised up and are strangely oh, coordinated as they move towards you. Did we want Zhang to get his chance? Oh, yeah. by all means, I am extraordinarily close towards combat at best. All Feel right, push them farther away from me. Two-handed sword, Doom Slayer, sneak attack. Not <laughs> roll your attack roll. Surprise attack. Me? Who? Bear eyes going first. Okay, then we'll let you go. I can reroll that twenty. You better. <laughs> Wait. Can I? Before I say that, let me double check. Uh, let's see. Abilities. Um, free melee attack. Reroll damage dice. Uh, doesn't look like you could reroll your attack dice. Two successes with a complication. <laughs> Two successes with a complication. Please roll me for damage. <laughs> <laughs> You're using the sword or the axe? Sword. Okay. <clears throat> okay. One, two, I will three. All three of those. Okay. Okay. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points of damage, with one, two, three, four, five of them being uh, abilities. Your Doom Slayer has vicious one intent. What was intense? Whenever you get an effect, it does something. What was intense? Do you remember? Uh, whenever I injured something, it instantly died. Oh, is that what it was? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth a try, but no, I, I don't remember what intense was. Okay. Something. Oh, wait. In a, uh, if you cause something an injury or harm, it uh, it gave it a second harm, right? That's. Oh gosh. Okay. Let me. There we go. That's the page. Yeah. Designed to inflict massive harm. If you inflict a harm, you inflict an additional harm. Okay, so what is that? Uh, 12 points of damage? <laughs> sure. All right. Okay, so 12 points of damage, that's two harms. Oh, I mean four harms. Uh, these are just squad mobs, which means every harm kills a squad mob. So four snacks just became snickety snacked. Jesus. However, Unfortunately, as you're swinging, you lose grip of your blade. They're, they're, the serpent blood sparks up. Something gets in your eye. It burns. You lose control of the blade as the blade slides forward. 
directly into one of the holes, bearing itself down to the hilt, where the hilt cross guard finally does stop it from going deeper into this hole. Well, poop. Okay. I'm unarmed! Somebody save me! Uh, all right, my turn to attack. <laughs> You're just going to go uh, Super Mario Brothers with a hammer? Yes. We're all doing this for this combat. So if you want to participate, I mean, my... you are welcome. That's three successes again. Roll for damage. Do you want to use any of the two momentum points that you just generated? Nah. What I'm saying is y'all are much better at it than I am. I will wait re- until there's only one left. If I'm looking re- re-roll those... I need to. But... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, you, you smash the rest of the snakes. <laughs> <laughs> I am reclaiming my sword. Okay. You better be careful about reaching into that hole, though. You want to... Well, so the handle is still, you know, out of the hole. Yes. I just have to jiggle it a little bit, work it out a little bit, jiggle it a little bit. Uh, it, uh, it, 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 it resists <laughs> as you try to pull it out. It doesn't just slide out. Do you want to put some resistance oomph behind pulling high. it out? Do I want to put some oomph into it? Uh, Do you want to put your back into it? I'll... Put my back into pulling it out, yeah. All right, roll me an athletics check, please. <sighs> if you need help, Mara, I can help too. <laughs> do I have anything for athletics? No idea. But wait, there's more! <laughs> oh, yeah, but wait, there's more. Slash. <laughs> One critical success. That's two hit successes. You successfully pull the sword from the hole in the stone. Wrapped around the blade is another snake. And coming from one of the holes in the ceiling, it drops a snake. And from another one of the holes in the walls, drops a snake. And out from one of the holes in the floor climbs a snick. <laughs> and from the hallway behind you comes forth two horrendous half-man, half-snake hybrid things that look kind of like the statues you saw before, but really kind of like the West Virginia on the river folk version of the statues <laughs> you saw before. <laughs> Meth, huh? Um, Flowing around and over them is another handful of snakes. As in total, there are now two mutant snake man hybrids and roll, let's go with three die six, uh, 12 nope ropes. (laughs) <laughs> no ropes. <laughs> no ropes. Right. And danger noodles. I love danger noodles. <laughs> I will once more give you guys uh, the initiative because heroes do always get to go first, and I forgot to spend enough doom to make it a, a surprise attack. Well, I'm over near the snakes, so I I was attacking. So somebody I'm going to spin around and take on the. Been the two snakes. doing nothing. Perhaps could attack. So there are four on this side of the room, eight on that side coming from the hallway behind you, Zang, uh, and the two big guys. Me and him will take the big guys. I'm the one holding the torch, right? I'm going to. Uh, You are indeed holding uh, the torch. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move the torch uh, in such a way that my shadow begins to grow and I. Do my best to intimidate the shit out of uh, two, two giant humanoid mutant snake men things. Yes, and my specialty is scaring the shit out of things. I'm sure you know that. I unnerve things. I 
Look, Mentally beasts manipulate. can be I'm... scared. Uh, beasts do do get scared and can get intimidated. That's why when a bear is attacking you and you get big, you're like, ah, yeah! Beasts can be intimidated. Not to say that these things are beasts anymore, but beasts can be intimidated. Well, humans can also be intimidated. So if they are one part of each, I would imagine they can all still be intimidated. It, it, oh. is, a, it is an assumption. It is an assumption. The hell is that? You. <laughs> And I make an attack or, or... Yeah, I'm waiting. Waiting. yeah. Oh. Okay. That's what I was waiting for. Uh that would just be two successes. Two uh two successes. Um roll me a uh a ment your mental damage. Roll me whatever the mental damage would be. Sixty-six. Check something real quick. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven points of mental intimidation damage. No yep. effect, though. Yeah, uh, they are pier. It is a piercing effect as well. You have to roll effects for effects. A five or a six is an effect. Otherwise, it's just ah. single target damage. Fair enough. Um, uh, so the seven points of mental, which one were you specifically targeting? One of the big uh, things? The closest humanoid big thing. Okay. Uh, you pull up a Gandalf, making yourself big with the shadows and the smoke and the lighting, and you, you make a sound and a shape and a function that would scare the shit out of anything. And while technically it does receive some some mental health damage, it, it has a lot of uh, mental health soak points due to the nature of this creature. But you do do some mental health damage. Okay. Get him, Thornicious. Oh, yes. So, uh... I whirl around onto and take aim at the two snakes. They are snake at point men. blank range. The no, snake no. men, yes. I intimidate the shit. Uh, I'm at point blank range, range with them. It's never going to be close. Is anybody else? Yeah, yeah, they are point blank. Like they are, they are right up on your shiznit. Yeah, they came into the pass. Uh, they came in from the passage uh, behind us. So. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to use. Um, Quick release, hail of arrows. Okay, okay. And uh, I guess uh, there will be no penalty because I can also use shoot for the horizon. Uh, okay, so what is shoot for the horizon? Reduce the penalty for uh, firing at a range other than its default by one. Your default range is medium, but so cool. under medium is close, under close is touch. So you do have you do have it one. Right. So I can reduce that one to zero. No, no, no. <coughs> and then so your bow your, has, your your bow is medium. Underneath medium is close, right? Right. So close range, you would have no penalty because of that ability. Closer than close is touch or melee range. So they are two steps closer to you. Okay. So there is a one difficulty check penalty because, I mean, they are like getting ready to bite you in the nose. But he got two successes, right? So I think he got, he got four. Yeah, I got three successes. What's your ranged for? Your ranged is, uh, is is sixteen and four, right? Oh, so that's four successes. Oh, so okay. that would be four, four yeah. successes. Okay, no, no, it's uh, it's. 76, and I'm actually going to do more well, damage. Well, hold on. Uh, it is going to attempt uh, defensive action. Because you've got... 
In the end, you have uh, three successes total. Um, and it deflects and parries and dodges two of those three successes, unable to actually get, get to the fourth. So you do actually do damage, unfortunately. It almost parried, though. It wiggled mm -hmm. way outside of it, but you're like, whatever. <laughs> so then I use the, um, the other abilities to increase the damage. Uh, minor action before attempting your ranged attack. Gain one additional momentum for the... Uh, what's, okay, this okay. level's been... Oh, quick release. Two loads of arrows to get a bonus dice, dice one, plus one, one damage for each load spent. So 2d6 more, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so an extra two yeah. dice six damage dice. And make sure you mark down you're spending two loads of arrows on this. You're, you're marking down how many loads of arrows that you have, you have and you're spending. And you're... Um, but yeah, so that would be make your bow go from seven dice of damage to nine dice of damage. And then re-roll. Uh-huh, yep. Yeah. Uh, you can re-roll four of those dice. Yeah, but I only need to roll oh. the one four and the one three. Yep, so you're just re-rolling two of the... There you go. Five and two. Yeah, All right, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve points of damage. Of that twelve points of damage, you have piercing and volley. Uh, you, were, you were targeting the, um, the thing, the, the big one. Yeah, the two, like, man-serpent thingies. Um, you you did quick release, right? Right. Okay. And so, that, I mean, that's only of... targeting one. Or did you, were you doing Hail of Arrows? Yes, Hail of Arrows, and can I do both? Yes, but using Hail of Arrows is actually costing three loads, not two loads. That's fine with me. I'll, okay. I'll take that. So, uh, spending three loads of ammo um, with the volley quality, which it does have, to use the secondary target momentum spin for one momentum. And the secondary target, I believe it's a different target that gets half damage per effect. Um, let me double check that that is the case. Um... I'm going to learn the book. Gern, learn the book. All right, here we go. Weapon qualities. Volley. This attack with volley does not institute an effect with further loading to perform volley. Just weapon attack. Oh, it's a momentum spend. It's not, dang it, it's not, it's not a weapon quality. It's a momentum spend. Momentum spins would be, forgive me, chat, uh, some of these rules, I just, I can never remember the details. Um, bonus win, secondary target. A secondary target within reach of the primary target is also affected by the attack and suffers half the attack damage, rounding up to random hit location if physical. Okay. Uh, so, all right. So only a singular second target. Uh, what's the second target? The other man, Snake. The other hybrid? Yeah. Okay, so the first hybrid. You plink for 12 points of damage. It does, however, absorb two of the points of damage bringing it to a total of 10, which still, still deals two wounds to it, killing it. The other one only takes five points of damage, though. Okay. It's one wound, but it's still alive. Along with all 12 snakes. <laughs> well, I've done what I can do. You always <laughs> kill my people, yeah. my enemies, before my enemies can kill them first. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> I would like to point something out real quick here. Um, it's 5.15 here. <laughs> yep. 5.15 here. But you are it's also in November. You are over in the netherworld, though, so. It was like that, unfortunately, at like 4.15 tonight here. Yeah. <laughs> because of the rain, the and, rain the, and everything. The haze. So who's next? Me. Well, first, I'd like to thank our chat for giving us so many more snakes to fight. Yes, <laughs> me too. Uh, 
And I nominate Zinya. And the party does have one point of momentum right now. I was going to say, I'd like to use that. And can I use fortune? Fortune. You can if you want. Let's you absolutely can use fortune. Basically, uh, an extra, like, good roll, like an automatic oh. one. How about I do that? Uh, sure, if you want to use a fortune point to get a guaranteed hit. Um, easy. I, I mean, not guaranteed what? hit, but... Oh, no. Good thing you did that. Uh, <laughs> or she can use it to cancel that 20 out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you got three successes and a complication. Are you going after the little snakes or the remaining big guy? The remaining big guy. Okay, you're going after the remaining big guy. The remaining big guy is going to attempt a defense action against your three... Um, against your three successes, the big guy is going to attempt a defense action and does not succeed at the defense action. You generate one point of momentum for the party, bringing the total momentum up to two. two. Roll four damage, please, which I believe for your swords is a five die six. Whoa. I think you can re-roll that four. Whew. Okay. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and re-roll the four. <laughs> <laughs> so, chat, what we're giggling at here <laughs> in 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 six dice, she rolled a five, a five, a five, a five, and a four. But she got to re-roll the four and got a five. <laughs> that would make your rolls literally five fives. Um, with, with piercing Nazis. damage, you Nazis. completely negate its. Um, you completely negate its armor. Dealing five points of damage, which is an automatic wound, bringing this up to two wounds and uh, killing it. Uh, finishing off this large hybrid snake monster creature. Unfortunately, its very blood seems to etch and acidify into your blade, dulling it. Oh, no. Not cool. Apparently, it's not toxins in their face. Their whole body is uh, acidic. Mm. Uh, that does leave 12 little snacks. Anybody else got something? <laughs> Anything? <laughs> um, well, Avertac, you want to go for it? Sure. sure. So I'll you've got four on your side of the room. And I will attack them. You go for it. The one on my side of the room. There are snakes on my side of the room. The snake! The snake! Oh, no! <laughs> this is beautiful. You guys are giving me all these crits. Yeah, now I get a hit and a complication. I don't think I can reroll that. Uh, no, you usually can't reroll the attack roll. You can reroll damage. Yep. Um, roll, uh, roll damage. Or, yeah, roll damage for me. One, two, three, four, five points of damage. Two of them effects. Here all the six, fours. seven, eight points of damage. Three of them effects. The effect on that is vicious two, which gives you an extra six points of damage. Eight plus six is fourteen. Completely. I don't know. You tell me. I think so. Was it thirteen? We can go with twelve. I don't mind if you want it to be twelve. I'm <laughs> 14 points of damage, thus goo pasting two of the four snakes on your side and flinging the third snake that you heavily injured right into uh, Zinnia's, uh, right on top of Zinnia's shoulders. Nope, don't. Your turn! <laughs> oh, we never did, we didn't do Zinnia's second attack. Nope. 
we we didn't do that was a lot of bright flashing from a, something a tv like an application being turned on on a tv as it happens from time to time um, um so i haven't attacked yet this round right right well so we'll come back to xenia for her second attack because i forgot yeah, to do that. she's not she's not here currently yeah. yeah so yeah go for it all right so i've got one on my sword right uh yeah wrapping around your sword slithering at you to attack yep is um, and he's the only one near me, isn't he? He he is the only one near you now. Um, so I swing my sword at my sword. I mean, you can maybe shake it off a little bit, or you could like smash the sword into the wall. Maybe shake weight. Shake weight. Why don't you headbutt it? <laughs> you could well, you could pop the sword and then smash it, maybe. Um, we'll bring the sword down on the, uh... We'll bring it down on the one that's on his head. Yeah. <laughs> she would appreciate that, I'm sure. Um, I guess if I can kick it off, can I kick it off? Uh, yeah. I don't want to risk breaking my sword over a rock. So let's say your minor action is to try to, um... Jiggle it off of the off of you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let's go with animal handling for that. Animal handling. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Ah, three, one, two successes. Three successes. No, you're uh, right. You have have one. Yes, you're right. Two handling. successes. Generating one point of momentum for the party as you shake it off. Now you can. Attack it. Good, you're off. Attack! Because he shakes it off. <laughs> I shook it off. Shook it off. Okay, so now I can actually melee it. Yes, you may. Come on, give me a 20, please. No. Nope, two successes. Two successes. You're generating late. one point of momentum for the party, and I can't imagine any way that you don't do enough damage to it, but just roll your damage dice. I'm looking. So I've got Doom Slayer 76. The Doom Slayer. Whoa, Jesus. You um, didn't do enough damage. I can reroll three of those. God. <laughs> Where are you now? I can reroll one, two, three. Okay. Jesus. Slash. Yeah, yeah, you uh, you 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 chop it up real good, like tink 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 tink. Snake it off, snake it off. Oh man. Uh, oh. and I guess the only one that's left now is Zinya for her second attack. Is she gonna be back Zinya. for me? Oh, Zinya. <laughs> you. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> yes, yes. Can I help you? Uh -huh. You're being beckoned. You have a second attack that you need to take. Real quick? Well, no. We forgot about you. Oh! We, we forgot that you get multiple you. attacks. Yes. Oh, that's right. Yes, yeah. yes. He gets another shot. Yes, yes. She does. She does. There's there's an injured one that landed on your shoulders. Uh-oh. Get it off. Yeah, it yeah. Off. So somebody, not to name names of a witch hunter, um, mm -hmm. might have golf chopped might might have done a golf swing and sent one that landed on you and is now like wrapping around your head. Uh oh. It could have been anybody. <laughs> it could have been anybody. <laughs> the person with the most golf club like weapon in the Warhammer, but not to name names on who's swinging the yeah. golf club Warhammer. Yeah, nice. But if I still had my swords out, would it have really gotten around my neck? Your swords were here, and it cut straight by oh. line into you, and it like, pating, and then wrapped its, its a. Uh, I always wanted a snake. Or shoe. Yeah, well, you're it's about to get snake shoe. You like it or not? <laughs> <laughs> I will allow an animal handling check to try to grab and toss it before it can do anything to you. Sounds good to me. 
One. Uh, one. Four and 18, I'm assuming a four success is, is a success because your animal handling is nine. You are successfully able to yank it off oh, of your oh, neck oh. before it bites you in the face. Um, for one point of momentum, you can have your second attack, though. I will do it if that's okay with everyone. That's okay with me. Roll your attack roll. Got 14 and 3. So that brings it down to just the eight snakes left. Uh, okay, so that's one success. All right. All right. Uh, two, three, four, five, six points of damage. You can reroll that four. Second. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points of damage. One of the eight remaining snakes is turned into seven remaining snakes. <laughs> Um, however, now it's my turn. I actually get an attack, people. I actually get an I get two attacks because there are two squad mobs. Um, and the first mob of four snakes, one, D, three, because there's only three of you there. Uh, that would be one, two, and three. Zang! The four pack of snakes comes Attacking of you. Very. With three successes. I shall attempt to parry that. All right. Using a point of momentum for a parry act for a defend action. Uh, I mean, I don't. Unless you have parry on the weapon, it costs you doom, I think. I have parry on my shield. Okay. Oh, sorry, not momentum. On It's doom, not momentum. Um, yeah, okay, so but you... I do have parry on my shield. Okay, then it doesn't cost you anything for your first defend action. You mean like parry the platypus. Uh, that is two successes. Unfortunately, they had three, so they get a bite at you. Glad you got it. Slash roll. Four you eight. did have your uh, snake vaccine, right? Snake scene. <laughs> I mean, I could probably whip with an anti venom. One to. point of damage plus a poison effect. Roll me a res physical resistance, physical resistance please. please. Does it get through my soap, my armor? No. <laughs> you seem so disappointed, Krom. I thought you quit, cared not. <laughs> He can't yeah, for our yeah, bows. Yeah. The second pack of snakes go for you. Successes. Ooh, two whole successes as the second pack of snakes comes after you. Would you like to uh, do a defend action and, and, and stop them from hitting you, Zinya? Zinya. She did. Sorry, yeah. I stuck to my daughter. <laughs> You're good. Uh, roll two die 20 for your defend action, please, for Perry. What did you do? I don't know what I did. Oh, there, oh, there it goes. They had two successes in hitting you, so you need two successes in your in pair. Your ha! And she gets it. Uh, what is your parry? Xenia, parry is... Okay. You generate two successes to defend. Okay. And the snakes do nothing on my first attack in so long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make us roll for killing the seven remaining ones, because between the five of you, I know that you're going to kill the seven remaining ones. I might get another critical failure, but eh, no point in spending the time. So you're at the end of a hallway. You have uh, 12, uh, 19 dead snakes and two snake hybrid men things uh, scattered around you. You've now learned that the snake hybrid men things have some sort of acidic blood that didn't really like break your sword, but it definitely dulled your sword. So we're definitely not going to let them get too close anymore. Um, collect up any arrows that did not touch them. Uh, but... So you got a 50-50 shot on the three loads that you expended. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but with the um, with them having the toxin blood, I'm going to drop that another 50%. Uh, so um, basically roll a one die four three times. If you roll a one, you get the load back. Two. Mm -hmm. So three yeah. die four. Three die four. Uh, one of the three loads. All right, so you do a 180 to go back to the uh, the roundabout room. There's nothing else in these rooms, right? It's just like... Lots of holes in the walls. I hate these damn holes. Hello, Moto. Hello, Moto. So we, we would be taking the next right, right? We've just been taking rights so far. So you're going to take another right at the roundabout room. Is that correct, folks? Nothing, sir. You lose. Good. <coughs> Since they're not disagreeing, I'm going to say yes. You go yeah. back to the roundabout. You go 90 degrees around to the right of the roundabout. You follow the long hallway for a short period of time before coming into a large, rounded chamber with four exits oh, and a no. pillar in the middle. Great. Any you, go right. you can go straight. You can go left. Or you can 180 and go back. Let's keep let's keep going right. Uh like hand on the wall kind of right. Barbarian logic, stay at the wall, eventually you'll get there, right? Not necessarily, but I also don't have a better way to keep track of where we are, where we've been. Yeah, so mark the wall that we went right. Check all the other exits, make sure that we haven't marked these walls before. You have not. Okay. Then let's go right. <laughs> you take a right at the passage. You go down a short period of time to find a chamber. In this chamber, there is <laughs> two hybrid specimens and 11 snakes. We back away. <laughs> I can't keep doing this all day, guys. <laughs> start sending to like sneak forward and scout. <laughs> Unfortunately, you did not do that this time. They spot you and raise up and in an oddly coordinated fashion begin to aggress towards you. You want to shoot some before they can get in, shoot them before they can get up to us, maybe? Yeah, let's, yeah. I'm going to take out the two snake men before they get close. All right, so exactly how are you doing that? I am going to, um, yep. I'm going to use my abilities in ranged. We're going to... How many uh, points of uh, momentum do we have now? Uh, none. It's the beginning of a combat. Oh. All right. I should have let somebody else go first, but oh well. Yeah, you don't have to. No, I your, don't uh, your marksman... Uh, marksman ability allows you to spend your momentum and get you spend your minor action and gain a point of momentum. Yeah. Okay, I can do that and then spend that to use uh, on uh, Hail of Arrows, I guess. Yeah, you can do that. All right, that's what I'll do. Um, but that's on the, the Hail of Arrows is on the attack, is on the damage roll. Uh, the marksman is on the regular roll. So you gain one momentum for your attack right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Roll your attack roll, please. And if you want to use your one point of momentum to give yourself an extra attack dice, you can. I, I shall do that. Roll three die 20, please. Three d 20. Folks, wish me luck. That is still two successes. Two successes, yes. Um, that, yep, that is two successes. Although they do see it coming and attempt to avoid. Two, oh, oh, oh. Roll 2d20. They have a defensive. Ah! 
<laughs> Crap. Patwing, patwing, with, with. They had three successes on their parry dodge compared to your two successes. Unfortunately, your arrows missed, my friend. Well, at least they didn't and the friend did they miss? And the two snake hybrids and 11 snaky snakes continue at you. Oh, dear. All right, boys, it's all you. And girls, sorry. All right. Who was up first? I would say Xenia, but she's... I'll, uh, I'll go for it. I'll take a swing with Doom Slayer and see what the result is. Roll me an attack roll. One success. One success. Uh, the, uh, the snake monster creature will attempt to dodge it. And rolls one success on their dodge. Swing and a miss. Next. Ty goes to the victor, question mark? Ty goes to the player? Uh, it's not so much that it, you had a tie. You had one success, and his one success reduced your successes by one, bringing you to zero successes. Oh, okay, well, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's how the defend actions work, is for every successful defend action, one no is reduced from the no attack actions. No worries, we're good. That's the last time. Abertech? Yeah, I think my controller, my controller, my keyboard. After watching both of your friends with wildly, <sighs> I got this. It's a, it's a delicate operation because maybe you can't see it, but there's a very cute cat right here that I'm trying not to disturb. I see some ears. Uh, I see uh, some ears. Ember. Hi, Ember. Now you're looking at me. <laughs> All right, that's three. Three successes? Oh, shoot. I'm probably not going to be able to parry against that one. You're going against you're the big creature, big right? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that was zero successes yeah. on that parry. Okay. So you generate the party two points of momentum. Zinnia has not attacked yet, right? Zinnia has uh, not attacked yet. All right, so I'm going to save that momentum for her. She's best suited to use it. <laughs> Is it my turn? Not yet. He's still got to roll for damage. I I, uh, I missed. You missed? Because you touched the computer. Yep. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, actually, they they uh they actually beat my rolls. So. They uh. Uh, two, three, four, five, six points of damage. Three, four of them affects. Effects of Vicious 2 means 8 points of damage. 8 plus 6 is 11. What? No. That's 14. Oh, no, he means Canadian damage. <laughs> 8 plus 6 is 14, meaning 2, uh, 14 points of damage. None of it is armor-piercing However, so that reduces it to, uh, uh, what, what did I say they have? Uh, two, oh. two points of armor of their tough hide has two, two reducing it down to 12 points of damage. Dealing oh. two wounds to the large snaky man hybrid thing, thus killing the large snaky man hybrid thing. Okay. Zinnia. My turn. What's left? My turn. Roll an attack roll, please, if you want to attack. Do you want to attack the other large snaky man hybrid thing? Sure. Who was that that just killed the uh, the last one? Abertech. Abertech, okay. Is that uh, one success? Uh, your melee is 12 and 2. So, yep, one success. Uh, they do attempt to dodge it again, but because they've had so many dodges now, it costs two doom to dodge. 
And he succeeds at dodging your first swing. However, you can use a point of momentum to get a second swing. I was just getting ready to say. I will use a point of momentum. Roll me the attack roll. Oh. He doesn't need to dodge this time. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Sing! Save the party. Do your duty. Everyone else failed except for the witch hunter. <laughs> so there's one large snake guy, right? One big snakey okay. snake that you do and... know that last time was not very intimidated by your very successful intimidation tactics. I would like to spend a point of momentum in order to uh, increase my melee attack. My lanta? All right. You spend a point of momentum. Roll three die 20. Four on die your 20. Attack roll. Do you roll three die 20 normally? No, uh, but with Death Blade, I get an additional 1d20 on attack rolls uh, when I spend a point of momentum to gain a point or a d20. So well done, sir. Roll four die 20, please. Well, is that two successes? Two successes. Still two successes. I'm going to use two more points of momentum to it. No, this one time is going to be three points of momentum. Or sorry, doom. Three points of doom as he attempts one more defend action. One success on the defend action, bringing your successes down to one success, which is enough to do hit. Roll me damage, please. And I'm braining him upside the head with the uh, the torch. <laughs> uh, which is going to be what was melee damage is one. So that is how many? Oh, how many? How many attack? Or how many dice? Uh, native. Yeah. How many damage dice go on me? Do what? Sorry, uh, continue. What were you saying? Uh, your claws themselves have four. Um, I don't know if you get any other bonuses. Oh, uh, I'm hitting them with the uh, the torch. Oh, the torch? Okay. Uh, yeah, also four. Um, it okay, so have... that would be five based on my stats. Bonus melee damage plus one. Oh well, I mean, so it's it would be three, just like what you have with an extra bonus from your from your from your melee, so four total. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's fragile, but it back. can light them on fire. Uh, one, two, three points of damage. Do you get to to reroll? Re roll two of those, and I will reroll the three and the four. All right. Four. <laughs> For a three and a three. Uh, three points of damage with the torch as you bonk it. It does have two armor piercing, so only one point of damage is dealt to the creature. Uh, that does make it my turn. The creature's turn. As the creature heads towards Thornicius. as it attempts an attack on you with two successes to attack you with its claws ah. and its tail and its... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it's you who's cursed. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five points of damage, one of them being effects as it clubs you and bites you at the same time for five points of damage. Roll me so a much. physical resistance check versus the so poison. Much. I have two soak for my armor. Okay, so three points of damage. Okay. Three points of damage, uh, but the uh, the poison still gets through. So roll mm -hmm. me a resistance check. You just need one success to uh, resist the toxin, the acid -y, poison -y stuff. Tis but a flesh wound. Which is, uh, that is a success. Is your resist, what's your resistance set? Um, resistance yeah. is a three. You generate one point of momentum for the party. Ooh. But you do take three points of damage. 
And of the 11 Snakey Snakes, the first pack of four. 1d5. They go after Thornicious oh. in a unified, strangely coordinated method of attack. Uh, two successes. How many? Did, so, do you have the parry skill? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is that? Are you sure? Deflection. Okay, you can reduce the amount of doom to zero. Okay, so that first parry was free, but this one's going to give me a point of doom back. Mm-hmm. Is that what you want? Okay. Well, you take that point of doom right? and attempt a parry. You, you have one parry, they have two attacks, bringing their successes to one attack, which is still enough of an a success to hit you. They do a bitey attack. Four, one, two, whole... Gosh darn it. <laughs> okay. They and bite, but don't make it through your armor. The second set of four snicky snicks. Go after Zinnia! Uh, they have three successes. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Maybe you should start pushing this. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to help. <laughs> if I did, uh, you so <laughs> they have two successes, and you get a complication. Three, four, die, six. The complication being they have snuck up. Well, not really snuck. They have slithered up underneath their armor plates. Thus bypassing your armor resistances for one, two, three, four, five points of damage. Two of them effects. Uh, I need a um, resistance check. You need two successes to resist the poison. That probably is two successes. I uh, will double check. Your resistance is 10 and one. Yep, so that is two successes. You resist the poison, but you do take five points of damage, um, which does give you an injury. That injury will not recover at the end of the combat. Uh, as they bite deep into your Achilles tendon. They yep. bite your ankle. Yep. And the third set of three snakes goes for Zang. They have no successes to hit you. You are able to successfully sidestep them. And that brings it back to the party's turn. There is one big critter that has taken a little bit of damage and 11 little critters. Some of them wrapping themselves around Zinnia's legs. You flew some happier. <laughs> and we should definitely attack her legs. <laughs> you said they're around my legs? Yeah, they just like bit into your ankles and they're swarming up you, like trying to climb you and bite you and get past your armor. Nothing like snakes up underneath a chain mail between them. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, they're biting. <laughs> What about um, the animal handling thing? Uh, yeah, I, I would give you, if you did two successes on your animal handling, you could shake them all off. <laughs> Snake them off. Um, shake them off. Shake because them you have a physical injury, all difficulty checks of physical activities are also at a plus one difficulty. Um, so that is one success. Minus one success, no successes, and a complication. Uh, so, so you know how when you get lit on fire, you're supposed to stop, drop, and roll? Uh-huh. You had a bit of a panic moment with the snakes climbing up you, and you stopped, dropped, and rolled. Getting closer to the snakes rather than farther away from the snakes. You stopped, dropped, and rolled. Oops. See. Well... <laughs> oh, maybe this. She couldn't make rope. Couldn't deal with the snakes. Maybe it's a theme. 
Maybe this is a cursed cave. Big guy. All right. Earn us some momentum. I will, yeah, I will get the snakes off. I will attack the big guy. Attack the big guy. See that I will give you any momentum because now that you've said it, I probably will watch it some next time. Yep. Hey, <laughs> I go. I toss more snakes off the thing. <laughs> Roll two die. Twenty. It does not successfully parry, though. Uh, so you deal damage. She's gonna be covered with snakes like Farland on her street. <laughs> we'll just start calling. We'll just start calling you Judy. Hey, oh Farland from the Christmas tree snakes. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five points of damage, three of them effects, delivering an extra six points of damage. Five plus six is 14, which is two injuries, thus killing. Uh, no, that's that's 11, and it's not armor piercing, so it's actually only nine points of damage, which does not kill it. Didn't it already have one, uh, one wound from... Oh, it didn't have a wound, but it did have damage to it. It did have three points of damage to it. Um, from you. It did have points of damage from you to it. Uh, all right. Because Zhang weakened it first, you are indeed able to kill it. <laughs> well, that's something you don't hear every day. <laughs> <laughs> because Zhang damaged it first, you successfully killed a creature. <laughs> Unfortunately, in smashing it with your hammer, it popped like a zit, scattering more acid blood. On Zinnia. Hmm. Maybe it'll please. dissolve the snakes. Uh, fortunately for Zinnia, it doesn't actually do any damage to her other than sting a little bit and give you some sores on your skins from where it's like boiling in, but doesn't do any actual damage. <laughs> uh, Verai. All right, we're going to kill. There are 11 snacky snacks, four of them wrapped up in uh, Zinnia. Well, I'm not swinging at Zinnia, so I'm swinging at the, the free floaters, the the ones that are not all wrapped up on Zinnia. All right, roll me an attack roll. That is zero successes and a complication. <laughs> Ow, my uh, ankle. <laughs> sorry, then, yeah. Hey, um, nice know me. You were swinging the battle axe. That's it, though. Um, swinging that, that blackened, cursed battle axe. And, oh, let's see. Um, you know what? Just... Roll me, roll me another die twenty. Just, just let's see. The lower, the better. Middle, middling ground. Okay, okay. So you're swinging that cursed battle axe, and right as you start to swing it, you get completely disoriented as you see flickers of sight from the teddy bear that confuses and disorients you. Um, as you swing the axe and forgetting quite what you're doing and slip, dive, and fall into a pile of snakes. Two of your party is now rolling around in the snakes. Come on. I like it here. It's fine. It's <laughs> fun. uh, Thornicius, I think, it's, uh, I think it's up to you now. God. Oh, wait, Zang, have you got, you haven't gone this round yet, have you, Zang? No. This time. Watch your shot, Thorny. <laughs> These snakes are dynamite. They're in my hair. They're in my hair. So let me get this straight. I'm supposed to one shot a snake off of Zinya. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, well, Zinnia's got snakes like crawling all up in her armor. She looks like Verai just laid down on the snakes. Verai, 
<laughs> no, you're not supposed to one shot a snake. You're supposed to one shot four oh. snakes. Yeah, all the snakes that are, snakes that are crawling inside her armor. Good luck. <laughs> now you could try to assist her. The fuck, girl? I didn't tell you to roll. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Which How is that possible? So there is a section of snakes inside of Vera's armor, or sorry, inside of Xenia's armor. There's a section of snakes that Vera is laying on top of, and there's another three snakes over here that was attacking Zhang. Which of those three groups were you attacking? <coughs> <coughs> oh, it's not a good choice no matter which way I go. Belly uh, flop on the third Zinia. pile. Uh, I'll be honest, I was going to try and help Xenia. By shooting arrows? Actually, no. That's the point. I wasn't getting able to wasn't able to get out. I was going to grab the snakes and pull them off of her. Okay, so we're going to turn that into an animal handling check rather than an arrow check, okay. which for you has zero successes and one complication. <coughs> so then, yeah, there's good news. He does grab the snakes and gets a couple of the snakes off of you. The bad news is they are now running up inside of his sleeves, inside of his armor. Oh, you can't have nice things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does quite tickle. Especially if they get up into your armpit and begin to bite. Not funny. Not funny. Uh, Zang, you're, you're, it's, it's up to you now. It's up to you now. <laughs> Apparently. So about that snake charming. Yeah. No. Not my thing. Not again. Not the thing. Oh, he does have one point of momentum. Um, so I'm trying to... That book. I need to look at something. You... I need to see it in effect of one of my other weapons. There's... Spread, spread. Uh, spread? Yeah. yeah, roll exhibitional hit locations. Oh, we don't really use hit locations there. Yeah, no. yeah. Which one has... Oh, the Urumi. Yeah. Just wondering if I could use that to hit multiple snakes at the same time. I'd allow it. Tear her legs off. I'd allow it. Okay, I'll whip that thing out and start uh, attempting to remove the snakes from everyone. Uh, so the emissary Zinia pulls first. out a cat of nine tails, complete with the spikes on the end. Uh, it was my belt. He whips uh, off his belt. Great. Like, a, like a dad, like a dad. At, a BDSM, at a BDSM party with a cat of nine tails. Like a dad in a BDSM party. <laughs> must have had an interesting so, upbringing. I will, I will use that single point of momentum that we have left and attempt to actually hit everything. And hey, I got a success. One success is enough. Roll me four damage, please. One, two, three points of damage, and I think you can reroll the four. One, two, three, four, five points of damage. We're just gonna say it's like the secondary of secondary target momentum. You got a you got a point of success. So two of the snakes. The second snake takes half damage. The first snake. Uh, which were you attacking the snakes that were trying to swarm up on you? The three pack. Uh, no, I was trying to get them off of Xenia. Uh, oh, okay. How did you say the, the spread effect was going to work? Just like secondary target, the momentum spin for secondary target. Okay. Uh, secondary target takes half damage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll round it up. Three points of damage. <laughs> Five to the first, three to the second. Uh, so, Xenia, there were two snakes on you. There is now, there is now one pissed off snake on you. The one that bit into your ankle is somehow still there and still hanging on. It was protected by your boot from being quite demolished by Zhang's cat of nine tails. And he's like, 
I got this. And he starts whipping it around and whipping at you with his cat of nine tails. <laughs> but he does kill a snake. <laughs> and and, and I don't injure her. Yep, no. He did not hurt you ah. either. He stripped the skin off of the snake that's still biting you, but it is still biting you. Can I go to grab it? Uh, sure. It is your turn, I believe. <clears throat> um, animal handling to get him off. <laughs> <laughs> what is all this, man? I don't know. Oh. Stop touching it. Dang. You know what? At this point, I said we let the snakes just... just. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to do for another complication now at this point. Um, uh, you are so panicked from this snake biting into you, taking a wound, the poison damage that you are resisting but is still attempting to course through and is burning the blood in your veins, uh, that you completely just lose your turn here um, as you're like trying to rip off pieces of your armor. You're trying to get the boot off that this snake is in. You are trying to rip pieces of your armor off so that you can get to this snake. Get off, get off, get off. No, 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 and no, no. the rest of you see Xenia stripping pieces of armor off while screaming and squealing. Uh, that does make it the snake's turn. Uh, so the snake that is inside of your armor does try to bite you. And it does have one success at biting you. Oops, four d6. One, two, two whole points of damage, but two of them are effects of the acid. I need a resistance check. So you'll need actually three successes on the resistance check. Uh, you might as well use your another point of fortune. Fortune, yeah. Might as well. It's a good point. <laughs> A good idea. Or just the... So it is an oh. automatic one. So yeah. Oh, there you go. You generate. Was yours? What is your resistance? Is a two, right? Uh, Zinya skills resistance. Oh, it is a one. Okay. Uh, you do generate um one, two, three, four, two points of momentum for the party, and you resist the poison. No, sorry, one point of momentum for the party, and you resist the poison as it begins to course through your veins. However, that snake is still there biting two points of damage. Hmm. Um, uh, Thornicius, there are two snakes that are now crawling inside of your armor. Okay, so one of them getting... succeeds. Well, uh, two, uh, four, D, six. What's he doing? One, two, three, four, five points of damage. One of them being effects. I need a resistance check. You need at least one success on your resistance check. No, you know touch. <laughs> Good enough. Good enough. You do, however, take five points of damage, and they are underneath your armor meaning your armor soap does nothing. That is five points of damage. That is an injury. Actually, I have, I have um, the ability, the one resistance ability, which makes it higher. Oh, just a scratch. Wound on six damage instead of five. Mm -hmm. That's, That's a good time to have that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't take an injury as it bites you. At first, it was going to be biting you on like your arm, your 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 armpit tendons, instead of just bit you on your nipple. <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> Talk about having the snake bites. <laughs> well, I was going to get them pierced, but now. <laughs> uh, so that is three of the ten. So roll one d five as. Veri, the snake, the pile of four snakes that you are laying on attempt to bite at you. With one whole success. They're not in my armor? They are not in your armor. Yet. Yet. Okay, yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> so can I try to dodge? Can I try yeah. to hold on? Uh, yeah, it's just going to be at one higher difficulty than normal for the parry because you're on the ground laying with them. 
Okay. Um, Pantherish twist. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so get up on out of there. Get up on out of there. Reducing doom by one to a minimum of zero, and your acrobatics is a 12 and a one. Give me two successes. Let me point of fortune just because I want to do this gracefully and land on, you know, my feet. All right. Point of fortune. Do you want to still roll your two die 20? You don't have to. Okay. All right. That would be three. So five total successes. You needed two. You generate the party. Three points of momentum. As he does like a super ninja, spins sideways, does a little bit of like Brazilian dance maneuvers, spins around on his hands with his feet up in the air, pops one foot off of the wall, does a rotation and lands back on his feet looking like Wolverine. So uh, I... <laughs> When you're done dancing with the snake, freaking snake off of me. <laughs> uh, and the last pack of snakes that we're going after Zang, continue to go after... Ooh, they see a new target in uh, Verai. See, now you brought it back to yourself. With two, six, three successes. Three successes on biting at Verai. It will cost you a point of doom to do a defend action. Yeah, sure, have a point of doom. Okay. Three successes. What the hell are you? <laughs> you uh, parry off one of the three successes. They still have two, which is enough. Roll four die six. Uh, three points of damage. Do you have an armor soak of three? Gear three. Armor soak of three. They are unfortunately unable to make it through your armor. Barely. They're like spitting poison, and they are unable to bite through your arm. That brings it to the party's turn. Hopefully we have a more successful round this time. <laughs> there are snakes in Thornicia's armor. There is one snake in Zinnia's armor, and she's trying to strip her armor down to get rid of it. Uh, would it be a major, a major action others. for me to pull this snake out of my armpit? It's going to be a tough animal handling check, yeah. Animal handling? Hmm. I mean, you could always strip your armor off to try to get to it. Feels no. Yeah, I, I feel like swinging my warhammer at anybody's going to Just pull it out. <laughs> well, there are still yes. a few snakes that are not attached to something. I have two. Oh, are there? Two successes. You could That's two successes? This. Bill's what is your animal handling? Nine and two? Oh, all right. Ones that were two successes. You are able to remove the two, one of the two snakes from inside your armor. Unfortunately, the one that is really attached to your nipples is still <laughs> attached to your nipples and biting, and you're just yanking on it, and it's just taking skin with it as you're trying to yank it out. Yeah. But you got the second one out for sure. <laughs> so there's still a loose pack that's after Vera, right? Uh, there are still seven, now eight snakes on the ground. Oh, your laptop's about to die. And, and then there's one snake in his armor, one snake in her armor. Yeah, I got like ten All right, left. we'll attack a snake that's on the ground. All right. Okay. Roll an attack roll. Three. Okay, you generate two points of momentum. The party has four, which means you need to spend at least one point of momentum on damage. Is on a snake? Sure. All right. Well, it bleeds over to the next one. So oh, okay. Yes. I'll spin it on Dench, and I'll re-roll that four. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven, eight points of damage. Two of them effects, bringing an extra four. That's 12, plus one from the one point of momentum. That is 13 points of damage, obliterating. Oh, Two snakes and the third snake that was already injured, thus killing three of the eight loose snakes. Now raise your hand if you want me to try to help you with my arm. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so, Vera, you see your friend Thornicius like pulling snakes out of his armor and squealing, It's got my boob! It's got my boob! 
You want me to use my two-hander? I think I can carve it off. Hopefully the snake, not the moon. Get it! Get it now! <laughs> You're going after the one that stuck on him? Yeah! Yeah, why not? We'll give it a try. With your weapon? Yeah! And take it and pull it out. <laughs> Can you possibly make it worse? <laughs> I don't think it could be any worse. It wasn't a complication. <laughs> There's a snake in my boot. Now, Michael makes a good point. I only collect witches' nipples. I don't need to. <laughs> uh, roll for damage. Unless. You do enough damage. To, you do enough damage to kill the snake that was attached to his titty. The head <laughs> is still attached because the muscles are clenched down, but it is dead now. <laughs> just You're leave it there. Like really get some hands up in the armor. <laughs> Nipple piercing just achieved. Leave it there to frighten your enemies. <laughs> There is now one snake inside of her armor and five more on the ground. Say the what? One snake in your armor, five on the ground. Get the snake in your armor out. Yeah. Well, don't mind. I'd like to use a point of momentum to attack the uh, five on the ground before they get into anyone else. Roll four die 20, please. Snakes are perverts. Well, this one's going after her Achilles tendon. Holy crap. <laughs> Guys, that's uh, five successes? Dang. That, that's four points of momentum. You need to spend at least three of them on damage. Otherwise, they're going to be wasted. Holy crap. Okay. Um, Help. Spend, yeah, I will spend eight spend. points of momentum. Why not? <laughs> I'll spend three points of momentum. For damage. All right. Roll me a damage roll, and then I'll have three extra at the end. Uh, one, two, two points of damage, one of them being effects. Three points of damage, two of them being effects. So uh, one snake is snipped in half. Uh, three, that puts it to six points of damage. One snake is snipped in half, and a second snake is also snipped in half, leading three remaining on the half. Um, and Xenia, you're the only one left now that hasn't been gone. <laughs> and you got five points of momentum. And you've got five points of momentum here. <laughs> I will use three at least to get this thing off of me. Okay, roll a roll an attack roll uh, with five die twenty. Oh, whoops. So roll three extra dice. Ooh. Uh, one, two, three, four uh, successes. So that is two extra points of momentum. The party now has four points of momentum. Roll damage, please, which is your five die six. What? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you <laughs> re-roll the four, please? And were you putting any points of momentum into the damage? Yes. How many? We've got Done four. with this thing. My God. <laughs> All effects. Uh, yeah, so the one that was uh, biting into your Achilles tendon, you reach down and, like, snap its whole head back and then whip it around to kill another one of the snakes. <laughs> <laughs> We're running late. The rest of the snakes, you figure out how to kill. You don't take any more points of damage. The only pr Eventually, you put your armor pieces back on that you shed. Thornicius is like rubbing his now pierced chest. Um, you do have an injury. All your physical skills are at one extra difficulty now until that injury gets healed, which is actually very difficult to do in this world. Um, but with that, you pull a 180, go back to the uh, go back to the room. Let me make certain I mark down which room that you guys are in. You're in this one. And it is that the round the next room. time we want to send a scout. Probably a good idea. It is the roundabout, it is the fourth roundabout room that you have now been to. 
And um, with that, we will continue this. I'd like to say, like, so this dungeon could either go very, very fast or very, very, very long, depending on the routings of the party and how they navigate through it. Uh, it could be like a five-minute dungeon. So, we know. Um, so with that, ladies, gentlemen, and if you identify as anything else, you too, uh, we love to have you. We're going to get a raid going on set up here, so be sure to hang out with us, hang out on the raid. Uh, when we get to the next raid, be cool. Oh, I do have some announcements, though, for the upcoming shows. Uh, let me pull up the announcements channel. Let's see. Today is the 21st, so what's happening? Uh, tomorrow, 11.22, 8 p.m. Eastern, Call the Nether Deep, Episode 9. Nice seeing you here. After a violent introduction to Bazazic Stanol... Stin Boltar's Banditos head into the city proper to get some questions answered. Thursday the 23rd at 3 p.m. Eastern is the surprise cookie trek. Anniversaries and adversaries. The crew must deal with synthetic meatloaf, a godlike man-child, and the proper way to serve man. Uh, Friday the 24th, cookie trek. I don't have a description, but it's always a good time, so check it out. Uh, Sunday the 26th at 9 p.m. is the Tomb of Annihilation. Riddles and puzzles and trapped doors, oh my. After finally gathering all nine puzzle cubes, the party is trying to gain access to the Tomb of the Nine Gods as they flee from the beckoning death. A deadly mist summoned by Valendra Shadow Mantle that turns the corpses it leaves behind into zombies under her control. They've made it through one puzzling door only to be faced with another. With the beckoning death at their heels, will they survive to face the Tomb of Annihilation? And with that, we're gonna be right we're gonna be raiding, guys. Be cool, be chill, have a good time. We love you. Good night.